The Shenandoah salamander is a rare and special amphibian that is found only one place on Earth, Shenandoah National Park. Within Shenandoah, it lives in small, isolated populations on the top of the highest mountain peaks. Its habitat is small and restricted to rocky talus slopes on high elevation summits. The narrow range in which it is found is less than 1,500 acres, one of the smallest known ranges of any vertebrate species. Because of its rarity and restricted range, the Shenandoah salamander has been declared a federally endangered species. The highest peaks in Shenandoah are a world unto themselves. The climate at the top of these peaks is more like the climate farther north. Here we find species such as the red spruce and the balsam fir, which are more likely to be found in Canada than in Virginia. The colder, harsher microclimate on top of these high elevation peaks supports unique ecosystems that are isolated from each other, making them stand alone as islands in the sky. Underneath the rocks, at the top of Shenandoah's peaks, is the world of the Shenandoah salamander, hidden away from our view. They rely on the rocks for their survival. The rocks protect them from predators lurking above, such as birds, and from the harsh rays of the sun. The sun relentlessly beats down on these rocky slopes, drying out the surface, but moisture remains underneath. Salamanders need this moisture, and without protection from the heat and drying effects of the sun, they could not survive. We know the Earth's climate is changing. Climate models suggest that temperatures in Shenandoah National Park will increase in the coming decades, putting the park's sensitive ecosystems at risk. Although climate change over time is normal, the current rate of change is unprecedented. Human influences are causing increased greenhouse emissions, which are contributing to this rapid change. How will these changes affect the Earth? How will they affect North America? What will be the impact on the Appalachian Mountains? More specifically, what will be the impact on the Blue Ridge Mountains of Shenandoah National Park? How will a changing climate alter the microclimate at the summits of Shenandoah's highest peaks? How will it impact the limited range where the Shenandoah salamander lives? Since the Ice Age ended and the climate warmed, the salamanders have retreated up the mountainside to cooler temperatures at higher elevations. It is believed that the Shenandoah salamander's range has also become increasingly more isolated and is restricted due to competition with the redback salamander. Redback salamanders are a closely related species that are believed to compete with the Shenandoah salamander for habitat. Although the two salamanders prefer a moist habitat, evidence suggests that the redback salamander may have outcompeted the Shenandoah salamander and pushed it out of its preferred locations forcing it to further retreat to the harsher environment of the high elevation rocky talus slopes. Climate change is expected to bring about warmer temperatures, extended periods of drought, more violent storms, and increased risk of wildfire. Will these rocky talus slopes get too warm or too dry for the Shenandoah salamander to survive? How much change in temperature and moisture can it tolerate? Will it be able to adapt to these changes? If it can't adapt, can it migrate to a new, more hospitable climate? It already lives at the highest possible elevation, so where else can it go? Or will it be pushed to the point of extinction? These questions and more will be studied in depth over the next three years. Scientists at Shenandoah National Park have teamed up with scientists from the University of Virginia, the United States Geological Survey, and the Smithsonian Institute in a cooperative effort to study the impacts of climate change on the Shenandoah salamander. Their research will involve data collection, analysis, inventorying, monitoring, field-based experiments, and lab-based experiments. During the summer of 2011, researchers were out in Shenandoah National Park acquiring the data they need to develop the climate change models. They will evaluate data that has been collected at the Big Meadows weather station since 1935 to see how the temperature and humidity has changed over the last 75 years. 
They will collect data over the next two years from devices called hobos installed on the top of Hawksbill Mountain. By comparing the two data sets with potential future greenhouse gas emissions, they will create models for future climate change in the Shenandoah salamander's habitat. Work was also conducted to map the area where the Shenandoah salamander currently lives and perform experiments to study the impacts of temperature and moisture change on the salamanders. This is being done by Dr. Evan Grant, an amphibian research biologist with the United States Geological Survey and a team of researchers from the Amphibian Research Monitoring Initiative. Uh, the purpose of our, of our project is to help uh, gather biological information on the Shenandoah salamander. Uh, and the ultimate goal is to help the park make uh, good decisions about protecting and conserving this endangered species. So one of the main hypotheses about um, the, what's limiting the distribution of the Shenandoah salamander uh, is competition with a similar species, the redback salamander. The early experiments on the species suggested that while there's a uh, suitable habitat for both species, the redback salamander is better able to occupy that habitat. Um, so if you think about a, what a salamander likes, they like kind of cool, humid areas, some vegetation, a bunch of soil and leaf litter, has a lot of invertebrates uh, for them to eat. Um, but the redback salamander, being a potentially better competitor, is able to occupy those sites and exclude the Shenandoah salamanders. So the Shenandoah salamanders evolve some neat, uh, neat biology in that it can tolerate these warmer, drier habitats, and so um, they can live in places that are mostly rock with a little bit of soil and some leaf litter, and um, it could be due to competition. I guess the important part is that the, the questions are related to how, how can we protect species even though we know that there's uh, kind of this looming stress of climate change. And so can, can we do something to make better decisions to protect the species? make sure that it persists for future generations.